Hello and welcome to today's lecture on microwave oscillators. In the last few lectures we have been talking about different types of amplifiers. So, today we are going to talk about microwave oscillators using an active device. Now, active device can be a stable active device in that particular case we will use that as an amplifier and use positive feedback to design oscillator. And if the device is unstable in that particular case we will draw input stability circle and choose a point which is most unstable and then we design oscillator. So, let us start today's lecture. Let us first look at what are the oscillation conditions. So, we will start with an amplifier with the positive feedback. So, we have an amplifier with a gain equal to A. So, part of this output is fed back to the input side and here is an input signal. This is only to show you there is an input signal for derivation. In reality for oscillator we do not require this input signal. So, let us see how we can write the equation. So, E 0 can be written as amplified output which is A multiplied by whatever is the input. So, what is input equal to? Input is equal to E i plus beta times E 0. So, this is A times E i plus beta times E 0. We can simplify this as E 0 multiplied by this term will come to this side 1 minus A beta which is equal to A times E i. Now, we take the ratio E 0 divided by E i is equal to A divided by 1 minus A beta. So, what will happen if A beta is equal to 1 then 1 minus 1 will become 0 A divided by 0 will be infinity. So, loop gain here in this particular case is nothing but A multiplied by beta. So, if loop gain is equal to A beta is equal to 1 in that case E 0 divided by E i becomes infinity. So, now just think about if E i is equal to 0 then E 0 may have 1, 2 or 3 any value. For example, if it is 1 divided by 0 it is still infinity, 2 divided by 0 it is still equal to infinity. That means for E i equal to 0 E 0 may have finite value which will be determined by the amplifier and the feedback network. We will see that later on. So, the oscillation condition is nothing but loop gain should be equal to 1. However, to start the oscillation choose A beta greater than 1. Now, the question is how much greater A beta should be? A beta can be 1.001 also, A beta can be 10 also. So, what is the appropriate value? So, I generally recommend choose A beta equal to 1.1 to 1.2. The reason will be obvious from the next slide. So, here is the response of the amplifier with positive feedback network. So, let us say there is some noise. We discussed about different types of noise when we talked about low noise amplifier. We talked about thermal noise, we talked about short noise and we had seen that because of those noises the noise voltage or noise current could be of the order of micro volt or nano ampere. So, what happens now if loop gain is let us say equal to 2. So, if the loop gain is equal to 2 let us say that 1 micro volt signal now through the loop gain will become now 2 micro volt, 2 will become 4, 4 will become 8, then 16 and so on. A condition comes when the voltage levels will get built up from let us say micro volt level to let us say 1 volt, then 2 volt, then 4 volt, 8 volt, but now we have to stop here. It cannot become 8 volt suppose if the power supply is equal to 5. So, from 4 it may try to go to 8 volt, but because the power supply is limited to let us say 5 volt. So, then the top as well as the bottom will be chalked off. So, it is something like we have cut down the head and the leg, we are left with the just central body and that will have a clipping over here as well as clipping over here. But when we are designing an oscillator, we would like to have a sinusoidal waveform if not 100 percent pure, relatively pure sinusoidal waveform. So, this is where I recommend if you take loop gain as let us say 
or 1.2, then what will happen? Now one microvolt will become, let's say, 1.1 microvolt. Then it will become 1.21 microvolt. Now as it keeps on building up, so let's say then 1 volt will become now 1.1 volt and so on, further increases. So now what happens, as the signal amplitude keeps on increasing, amplifier gain also starts reducing. Why? If you recall, amplifier gain is not always 100% linear, it actually speaking has a curved path. That means amplifier gain starts reducing as the input signal strength increases. So a condition comes when A beta will become 1, why? Because A has now reduced, beta remains same. So then the question comes why not we choose 1.01? The reason why I do not recommend 1.01 because the components which we have used to design an oscillator and feedback network which gives rise to an oscillator may have tolerances. Typical tolerance of inductor or capacitor can be about 5 to 10 percent. Hence it is always recommended that do not take 1.01 or 2 or 3, take 1.1 to 1.2. So if you take 1.1 to 1.2, then what happens? You are taking care of component tolerances and also by taking that number, you will ensure that there is a knot clipping at the top and the bottom level. So now let us see how we can design an oscillator using a device. You had seen this particular configuration when we talked about amplifier design except for one difference and that is over here. See in the case of amplifier there was an input and there was a input impedance matching network. But now for oscillator we do not need any input so hence we have given the term over here which is a generator tuning network. This part is similar to that of amplifier design. So let us see now what happened. The generator tuning network is designed such a way that it determines oscillation frequency. Now there are three oscillation conditions. First condition that is delta should be less than 1 and k should be less than 1. In that particular case device is unstable. Now you may say what will happen if the device is stable that means if k is greater than 1. In that particular case, I will tell you we will use the positive feedback to design a oscillator. Now let us just look at the two other conditions. The condition number 2 is gamma n multiplied by gamma s is equal to 1. Let us see where it is. So gamma s is looking from this side, gamma n is looking from this side. So we can say that this loop gain is nothing but equal to gamma n multiplied by gamma s. So if the product is equal to 1, that will be the condition for the oscillation. Now what about this third condition? So let me tell you condition number 2 and condition number 3, they are exactly same, but let us see where it is. So this is gamma out looking from the output side of the device, gamma L is looking at the input side from the load matching network. So if you see loop gain is nothing but gamma out multiplied by gamma L. So this should be equal to 1. As I just mentioned these two conditions are same. So let us see the derivation. We will start with one of the equation and we will get the second equation from that. Derivation of condition 3 from condition 2. So we will start with condition 2 which is gamma n gamma s is equal to 1. So we know the expression for gamma n is given by this particular term over here gamma s comes as it is which is equal to 1. So now you simplify this particular expression. So we can write this as S11 gamma s minus delta gamma l gamma s which is equal to now this will go to this side which is 1 minus S22 gamma l. Now we simplify this particular thing we can write in this particular fashion and after one or two steps we can actually obtain the condition gamma L gamma out equal to 1 which is same as condition 3. Okay? So that means if this particular condition is satisfied, this condition will automatically get satisfied. For given source and load impedances, gamma S and gamma L will always be less than 1. Recall Smith chart, 
on the smith chart we can locate all the real and imaginary values of the impedances and for the smith chart we know that gammas are always less than 1 and if gamma s is less than 1 what will happen to gamma n that means gamma n will be greater than 1 similarly if gamma l is less than 1 that means gamma out will be greater than 1 and either of these two conditions what they imply they imply that r in and r out are negative let us take a simple example so how do we define negative resistance let us say if r out which is equal to z out is equal to minus 10 ohm i am just taking a negative value of a resistor so for this particular case we can find out the value of gamma out as z out minus z0 divided by z out plus z0 so we have chosen this as minus 10 so minus 10 minus 50 divided by minus 10 plus 50 so this will become minus 60 divided by plus 40 which is equal to 1.5 angle 180 degree so we can say that magnitude of gamma out is nothing but greater than 1 in fact you can take any value of z out which has a negative r value and it does not matter what is the reactance value gamma out will always be greater than 1. So, here we can see that if z out is given we can find out the value of gamma out. If gamma out is given how do we find out z out well we can use smith chart to find the value of z out. However, as you might recall smith chart always represents gamma less than 1. So, how we can use smith chart when gamma out is greater than 1? Well, there is a technique to do that. So, let us see what is that technique. So, to find negative r out from gamma out what do you do? You plot 1 by gamma out conjugate on smith chart. So, we know that gamma out is greater than 1. So, if this is greater than 1, 1 divided by gamma out will always be less than 1. So, that can be placed on the smith chart why complex conjugate over here. So, when we take 1 by gamma out conjugate the angle of this particular term will be exactly same as that of gamma out. So, let us plot this particular term on the smith chart. So, 1 divided by 1.5 angle 180 degree will become now 0 0.66 angle 180 degree. So, we know that this is 0 axis, this is angle 0, this is angle 180 degree. So, we go around, go to 180 degree, locate this point 0 0.66 from the center. So, that will be 0 0.66. If you read the corresponding value that comes out to be 0 0.2. Now, read this value of R as negative. So, make R out equal to negative. Why we are doing that? Actually speaking, we had plotted 1 by gamma out. So, this value corresponds to 1 by gamma out. To obtain the value corresponding to gamma out greater than 1, this is what we do. So, from here we can find out the value of z out. How do we do that? Multiply this with 50. So, 50 multiplied by 0 0.2 will be 10. So, this is the value of z out which is equal to minus 10 ohm. So, you can see that this is how we started with minus 10 ohm. We got this value of gamma out. Then we started from this value of gamma out, we got this one. Now, the same thing you can also do for complex value of z out also. We will take an example later on, then this will be more clear. Now, when gamma out is greater than 1, that means now output impedance of the device has negative resistance. So, let us say we have a generator tuning network, after that we have an active device and the output impedance or you can say gamma out is greater than 1. So, that means looking from this particular device we can actually say that gamma out can now be represented as r out in series with x out, but r out now has a negative value. So, we can actually convert a two port network problem into a single port problem. So, the single port problem here is nothing but replacement of the earlier portion into just the corresponding value of the impedance which is r out in series with x out. So, for this particular case now gamma out will be greater than 1 
and for oscillator design gamma l is less than 1 and what we want we want the loop gain should be equal to 1 ok. So, two port oscillator circuit now reduces to single port oscillator. So, let us see how we can find the condition for single port oscillation. So, for oscillation loop gain should be equal to 1 that means gamma out multiplied by gamma l should be equal to 1. Let us substitute the value of gamma out and gamma l in terms of its impedances. So, we can say that z out is equal to r out plus j x out well x out can be plus or minus. Similarly, for gamma l we can write corresponding term. Now, all we do it is multiply the numerator term over here. So, that is right over here these denominator terms will go to this side and that will come and that will come on the right hand side. Now, the next step would be is to separate real part and imaginary part. So, if we separate the real part after a few simplifications you will find the condition that R L plus R out should be equal to 0. So, that means R L should be equal to minus R out. Now, please recall R out has a negative value. So, if this has a negative value R L will have positive value. Similarly, if we equate imaginary parts then we get the condition X L plus X out equal to 0. So, that means X L is now equal to minus of X out. So, if X out is inductive then this will be capacitive if this is capacitive this will become inductive. However, to start the oscillation loop gain should be greater than 1 that means gamma out multiplied by gamma L should be greater than 1 and this will only happen if R out magnitude is greater than 1.2 R L. Why we are defining like this? The reason for that is remember R out has a negative value and this is a positive value the magnitude of R L should be chosen less than the magnitude of R out. So, that the net resistance is negative and if the net resistance is negative then only loop gain will be greater than 1. Let us take an example. So, we will take a one port oscillator design here we have taken an example of a gun diode. So, gun diode has I V characteristics given by this particular form over here. So, you can see that as current increases voltage increases in this particular region, but if you see in this particular region voltage increases, but current decreases. So, this region is known as negative resistance region. So, what do we do to design an oscillator we bias this gun diode in this particular region. So, diode is biased with this DC voltage V DC corresponding to this DC current I DC. If you bias the diode in this particular region in that case what will happen? Gamma out of gun diode will be greater than 1 because it has a negative resistance region. We have just seen that if the resistance is negative in that particular case gamma out will be greater than 1. So, this problem is given so, for this biasing condition gamma out has a value equal to 1.24 angle 30 degree and this is at 10 gigahertz. Now, what we need to do? We need to design the oscillator circuit. So, the first thing what we should do it is we should find out the corresponding value of R out and X out. To do that we plot 1 by gamma out conjugate on the Smith chart. So, this will be now 1 divided by 1.24 which is 0.81 complex conjugate of this will be minus 30 degree when it comes to the numerator side it will become angle 30 degree. So, you can see that this angle is exactly same as that of angle of gamma out. So, now we have to locate this particular point on the Smith chart. So, 0.81 angle 30 degree. So, draw a line at an angle of 30 degree locate 0.81 on this particular Smith chart this will be 1 by gamma out conjugate. So, read the corresponding value of the z out from here. 
So, what will be z out? That will be 50 multiplied by whatever is the resistance value, take negative of that. So, the normalized value of resistance is 1.4, you can actually see this will correspond to the circle over here. So, it will become minus 1.4 and you can see that this will correspond to somewhere here. So, the, so the reactive part is positive which is plus j 3.2. So, we multiply this it comes out to be minus 70 plus j 160 ohm. So, for this particular gun diode this is the gamma out. So, we can see here this is minus 70 this is plus j 160 ohm. Now, to start oscillation we choose R L equal to 60 ohm. You can see that this particular value approximately satisfies this particular equation. Magnitude of R out will be 70 and uh, this is 60 multiplied by 1.2 is approximately 72. So, condition of R out greater than R L is still satisfied. So, this is reasonably good value to choose. What about X c? So, as I had just mentioned if this is inductance this should be capacitor. The reactance of this capacitance should be negative of the reactance of this particular inductor. So, X c should be equal to minus X l. So, we can say that Z of c is nothing but minus j by omega c which is now minus of Z of this particular value which is minus j 160. So, from here we can find the value of c which is equal to 0 0.1 picofarad. Now, I just want to mention that this design is not fully complete at this particular point over here. The reason for that is invariably when we design an oscillator, we always say that the load will be equal to 50 ohm. So, here the values obtained are 60 minus j 160 ohm. This part I leave it for you people. So, we have a 50 ohm load design the output impedance matching network so that Z L is equal to 60 minus J 160 ohm. Now, let us look at what are the design steps for designing a two port oscillator. So, in fact, if you ask many people and even if you see many books, they always say oscillator design is very difficult. You want to design an oscillator, it becomes an amplifier. Similarly, Sometimes people also say you want to design an amplifier, it becomes an oscillator. That is why I am giving you very simple design steps for designing a two port oscillator. Follow these steps, you will see that there is no problem at all. You will be able to design an oscillator if you simply follow these steps. So, now for given S parameters, what you do? First, you find the value of k. Now, if delta is less than 1 and k is less than 1, that means it is unstable, proceed. If k is greater than 1, that means this device is stable. For that, I will tell you in the next lecture how to design an oscillator. But today we will assume that the device is unstable, that means delta is less than 1 and k is less than 1. So, in that particular case, what do you do? You draw input stability circle or we can also say source stability circle. So, this is the Smith chart. So, when you draw the stability circle, we know that stability circle will be cutting the Smith chart somewhere. So, if you see this particular portion, this is the portion where the device is unstable. So, now we can choose any point in this particular unstable region and that point can be used to design an oscillator. However, please do not choose this point or this point or this particular point over here because they are at the border line of the stability. So, because of the device tolerances or even because of the power supply fluctuations, it is possible that this point may become this point over here and then the device will become stable. So, I recommend that choose a point which is the most unstable point in this particular region. So, you can actually see that this particular point is deep inside the input stability circle. So, this is the most unstable point within this particular region over here. 
So, please always choose this particular point and also there is an advantage. This particular point can be very easily realized by an inductor or shorted stub. So, I just want to show you the circuit which, which we started. So, what really happens over here? So, this is the point where I mentioned about gamma s. So, this entire generator tuning network is simply replaced by an inductor. So, all you do it is just put an inductor over here or you can use shorted stub line also. So, what happens if this particular stability circle is somewhere over here? Then in that particular case you can say that the most unstable point will be somewhere here and that can be realized by simply a capacitor. So, what will happen if the stability circle is somewhere here? That means that even a short circuit will make this device unstable. So, you do not even have to put inductor or capacitor simply short circuit the input side that will satisfy the instability criteria. So, once you have chosen the value of gamma s or z s which is this particular point, then the next step is you find out the value of gamma out. Gamma out is given by this particular expression and you have seen this particular expression when we were discussing about amplifier design. Now, you can see that S22 is known, S11 is known, S12, S21 all these S parameters are known. Gamma S has now been chosen corresponding to this particular point. So, we can now find out the value of gamma out. Now, please check gamma out magnitude has to be greater than 1. If it is not greater than 1 that means you have done calculation mistake. Okay. So, it has to be greater than 1, it will always be greater than 1 if you have chosen the initial steps properly. So, once we know gamma out is greater than 1, find out the value of R out and X out. Then choose the value of RL and XL as I did in the previous case and after that design impedance matching network to complete a oscillator design. So, in the next lecture we will look at oscillator design, we will look at several different examples. So, just to summarize today we talked about what are the different oscillation conditions. So, we actually saw that loop gain should be equal to 1 for oscillation condition. However, loop gain should be greater than 1 and I recommend you choose loop gain as maybe 1.1 to 1.2 to start the oscillation so that there will be less clipping in the output sinusoidal waveform. Then we looked at the single port oscillator condition and we had seen that R out should be equal to minus R L, X out should be equal to minus X L. However, for loop gain greater than 1 you have to choose R out as approximately equal to 1.2 times R L. And then we looked at two port oscillator design for which you draw the stability circle for only input side. Please you do not have to draw the output stability circle at this particular point. And then follow these seven steps and you will have oscillator ready for you. So, in the next lecture we will see more examples till then. Please study. I do want to mention here that when you want to see the next video, please see this video just before that and refresh your memory. So, thank you very much. We will see you next time. Bye.